In this video we're going to be replacing the lower control arm here in my 1995 BMW 525i. It's an E34 chassis car. So your lower control arm is this arm right here. It is one of two control arms in the front suspension. The other is this one. This is called your thrust arm. And I've done a whole nother video on replacing this. So if you want to see that, I'll have it linked up in the corner up here. But these two arms make up the entirety of the front geometry of the suspension. And as you might be able to see, this thrust arm here has a little bit more forward to backwards angle. So this arm handles a lot more of the forward to backward forces on your front wheel. Whereas your lower control arm up here handles a lot more of the lateral or left to right forces. And so each of these arms has two joints, uh, one bushing up where it joins the front subframe, and then a ball joint up on this end where it meets the front strut assembly. And as you can see, mine has a bunch of grease pushing out of it, uh, and the boot is totally worn out. So this ball joint is, is shot. So we're going to go ahead and jump in replacing it. So these are all the tools you're gonna need for this job. Uh, you're gonna need a half inch drive socket wrench, a 22 millimeter socket, two 19 millimeter sockets, which is also interchangeable three quarter inch if you don't have two of them. And you can also replace one of these with an actual wrench if you need to do that. And then you're also gonna need a 17 millimeter socket to remove your lug bolts. And then on top of those, you're gonna need some sort of a pry bar. Uh, we'll get to that as well as a ball joint removal tool. I definitely recommend the ones that you hammer in. Any ones that you screw into place, they're susceptible to cracking on this because it does take quite a bit of force to pop these ball joints out of here and then I also highly recommend a large breaker bar this is a three foot breaker bar which might be a little bit overkill but it'll definitely get the job done so once you've got your car in the air safely secured on jack stands our first step is actually going to be taking place at the base of our strut assembly and it is going to be to remove these three 19 millimeter bolts and now these bolts hold this plate down here which both of our control arms mount up to to the base of the strut assembly and we're gonna need to remove these to remove this plate from the strut assembly in order to get to the nut that holds the upper end of this ball joint because it's actually located a little precariously up under here and you can't get to it without taking this apart. So we're gonna have to do it. So this is definitely one place that you'd want to use a breaker bar. These are usually pretty well stuck on here. Uh, mine aren't terrible just because I've had them off recently. And one other thing to note, uh, this one back here can be a little tricky to get to sometimes. You might have to turn your steering wheel depending on where your lock position is, but theoretically, if it's perfectly straight, you can get to all three bolts. So that's all three of them out. Uh, and if your car is anything like mine was the first time I took this apart, uh, you'll need that pry tool to pop the strut assembly up away from this plate. They kind of stick themselves together with corrosion over time. Uh, but this little slot right here is a perfect place to wedge a little crowbar or something to pop those apart. Now things get a little bit tricky because in theory you should take the whole strut assembly out uh, but then you have to you know remove your brakes and all these lines and everything from that to get all that out of here. I found a way that you can do it without doing all that but it's going to be a little bit hard to demonstrate but I'll do my best. Basically uh, we're looking at the back of the brake rotor right now. Right in the center of your screen is about where that nut is located and what we're going to have to do is separate the strut assembly from that plate down there and we're going to wedge our strut assembly forwards and then once it's forward enough it will pull that nut out backwards and give us just enough access to pop it off. So I'll try to show you what that looks like right now. So first I'm using our pry tool up in that little slot here like I was saying and we're gonna pry these apart and I'm going to apply forward pressure on the strut assembly to push it towards the front of the car as this separates. So we're just gonna work this forward a little bit like so. In the center of your screen is the top end of that plate that our control arms mount up to. And also in the center of your screen is the nut we're trying to gain access to. And then on the far right, that's the base of the strut assembly. So that's all moved out of the way and uh, we can gain direct access. But if you're having a harder time than I did on this, accessing that nut, as you can see, you can move the steering wheel to twist that plate to pull the nut out away from this heat shielding back here to give you a little bit better access if you need. But now we're gonna go ahead and remove that nut and it is a 22 millimeter you probably will want a breaker bar to get it started and then switch over to your ratchet to get it the rest of the way out. So I'm now going to go ahead and hammer our ball joint removal tool into here between the plate and the ball joint itself and that should pry our ball joint away from this plate and while I'm doing this I'm going to keep it in line with the control arm itself to limit the amount of stress that I'm putting on the whole assembly. There we 
go. That's all pried away. So now we're up at the front of the car looking towards the back and we've removed our bolt joint from this side and all that's left is to remove this bolt from this bushing here. And so this bolt is gonna be 19 millimeters on both sides. Again, that's interchangeable with three quarter inch if you need. So you can either use like a ratchet on one side and an actual wrench on the other side. But this is another place that I'm gonna recommend using a breaker bar and that's what I'm gonna do to get that unstuck because it's got a little bit of corrosion on it. And then uh, we'll go from there. So we've got the old part out and the new one ready to go in. So assembly will be the same as disassembly, but in reverse. So we'll go ahead and get started with that. So we'll start by just bolting in our new arm. And there are two washers that go on the bolt, one on each side of this flange here. So it goes bolt, washer, washer, nut. And you can go ahead and snug this up, but you don't want to torque it yet. You only want to snug it up to where this is still moving freely, but it's tight to this flange. Because it's really important that we torque this with the weight of the car on it, so that nothing's twisted when we set the car down. So that's plenty snug, everything's flush, but I can't spin it by hand, but this still moves freely. So now we'll go ahead and get our ball joint back into place, and this will torque to 68 foot-pounds. There we go. So we got that ball joint back in place. It is definitely easier said than done because everything's really loose. Uh, but one thing you can use to your advantage is the fact that that is a ball joint and you can bend it to, to try to give it a little bit of encouragement to, to thread on through. But now we'll go ahead and stick the nut on top. And again, that's 68 foot pounds of torque. Alrighty, so that's torqued. And now we'll go ahead and get our strut assembly back into place and then bolt it in from the bottom. And now these three bolts torque to 81 foot-pounds. Alright, so now we've got the car lowered onto ramp so everything's under load and sitting where it should be. And that means we can go ahead and torque this bolt and this torques to 57 foot-pounds. So that's everything it takes to replace the lower control arms in your E34. I hope you found this video helpful, and if you did, feel free to check out my other videos. I got other videos like this one, including replacing the thrust arms, if you're interested in checking that out. And while you're at it, you may as well subscribe to catch all my future videos. And until next time, I'll catch you then.